Welcome back to the last phase of WorkCamp Europe 2024. So, did you enjoy your lunch? Yes? All right, very good. My name is Stuart, and I'm the host or MC for this uh, afternoon. We have on stage in a moment Marike van der Acht. Uh, she's happily married and mother of four children. And she has a master in sociology and studied communication sciences and obtained a social sciences PhD on the topic, and that's very interesting, like father, like son. The relationship between conviction tra trajectories of fathers and their sons. Now that makes me think, uh, but I'm not going to say anything about that. She's going to talk to us uh, about procrastination. Um, that's maybe a topic any, every one of us is familiar with. Um, so let me see some hands. Who has a goal of, or a professional change which they want to achieve in the next week, month, year, or whatever? Um, it can be anything, so like quit smoking, become rich, lose weight, double business figures. It can be anything. Just raise your hand if you have a goal but haven't met that one. Okay, that's quite a lot. That's perfect. So let me see hands of those who have already taken action to meet that goal. Who took action? Oh, that's less. Good. Now, so be honest to me and to yourself. Raise your hand if you haven't taken any action yet to make that goal. Be honest. Okay. I think that's your audience, Marika. So, I'm proud of those people who told that they haven't taken action yet. Marika, we're super excited to have you on stage. And please give her a big applause, Marika van der Racht. And she will talk about pivoting procrastination towards progress. Thank you. These are not my slides. But that's okay. Oh, these are, these are, now it's okay. Thank you. Um, oh, I was already kindly introduced, so this can be relatively short. My name is Marike van der Racht. I am uh, one of the owners of Emilia Capital. And Emilia Capital is an investment company and we invest in multiple WordPress br brands, but also in brands outside of the WordPress space. Before working at Emilia, I was with Yoast. I am the co-founder of Yoast and I was the CEO and the co-owner when we sold the company to Newful Digital in 2021. And before my life at Joost, as Sjoerd just told you, I was a scientist. So before I begin this talk, I would like to explain why I am doing this talk about procrastination. Because it's quite different from the talks I did before. So ever since I stopped working at Joost, and that's about a year ago, I noticed that I had a really hard time organizing my work. I was very used to working in a team. And now I was working alone, and I noticed that I was procrastinating. I was postponing things. I was even forgetting about things and not starting things. I missed my colleagues at Joe's that, without them knowing, kept me on the right track, kept me in the direction of what needed my attention and what needed priority. So I've done a lot of soul searching lately. I found out a lot about my reasons for procrastinating. And for a lot of people that have worked with me, this might seem surprising. Because I think I am highly productive. I am efficient. I never meet a deadline. And I'm a reliable partner. If we work together, I'll do what we have agreed to do. But just because I'm good at it doesn't mean that, I, that this was ever easy for me, that these things came natural for me. I just, over the years, built in so many strategies and tactics on how to get things done that I now know how to get things done. But my leaving Yoast exposed chaos. Um, the system I built around me for 10 years just collapsed, and I needed to find new ways. So it forced me to look at myself, and only recently I discovered I have ADHD. This is the first time I'm saying it out loud, so it's a big thing. Um, and that explains much of my chaos, but it also allowed me to look at me, so what am I doing that keeps me successful and keeps me getting 
myself motivated to do the next thing. So I deep dove, I hyper focused into this, the whole science around procrastination and found out so much about how you can be successful, even though you have a habit of procrastinating. And I applied that to what I love most, which is WordPress. And that all, whole thing led to me doing this talk, but it also led to us developing a new plugin. And with us, I mean me and our team at Emilia Capital. We just released a new plugin called Progress Planner, which is also um, aimed at overcoming procrastination in website maintenance. So let's begin. Today's presentation, we'll talk about website maintenance and website success. And then we'll deep dive into procrastination. What is it? And then we'll tie those two things together and talk about how to overcome procrastination of website maintenance tasks. So what does a website need to be successful? Well, it needs to have a good design. It needs to have a solid site structure. You want to make sure it's secure because you don't want to get hacked. You need to have up-to-date content. And if we're honest, you need high-quality copy. You need to have great performance. Your website needs to be fast. You need to have good internal linking, good call to actions. You need to have an intuitive design, great landing pages, and you should optimize the whole thing for Google. So that's a lot, right? And you know what? A website is never done. So you are never done. And the thing is with websites, people expect updated content. People just expect you to update your website. It's the main advantage that websites have over old-fashioned copy books. And we don't allow, we as visitors, don't allow for websites to be outdated. We don't trust that information. For books, it's far less of a problem. But just because you can update whenever you want, people also expect you to do that. But keeping everything up to date is a lot of work, especially if your website is growing. And as the internet is aging, and all of us are aging, and we are adding new websites, it becomes more and more work. So the tasks of maintaining a website can be really overwhelming. You might not know where to begin or how to keep track. But what happens if you don't properly maintain your website? Well. You, get, you could get hacked. Your content will get outdated, and that would lead to low trust. Your website probably will have more downtime, downtime, difficult word. Your website becomes slower. You'll have broken links and 404s. Your customers, perhaps, will be having difficulties in making purchases. You'll notice a drop in the search engines, higher bounce rate, and all in all, you will get less traffic. This is important stuff, this whole website maintenance thing. So why isn't this at the top of all of our priority lists? Well, let's be honest here. Website maintenance is not very exciting. It's rather boring, even. So what we do, we put our efforts into other tasks. Website maintenance tasks often get neglected because of other tasks we prioritize. So what do we do? Well, one thing that actually really makes sense is to work in your actual business. So imagine you're a hairdresser and you have a website. I do understand why you would rather work in your salon and cut people's hair and dye people's hair instead of working at your website. All right, that makes sense. And then the other thing is that we, as human beings, tend to prefer adding new stuff or designing a new website or doing something else rather than maintaining the old stuff. So new and shiny is always better. We tend to focus a lot on advertising because advertising gives us measurable results. We know what we'll get if we put an ad out. And then we focus on social media. So we all know, you all know that website maintenance is important. You knew that even before you entered this room. We all know this. But what happens is that we say to ourselves, OK, we really should get started with the website maintenance stuff. And then this happens. Or this. 
or, and this is my favorite, yeah. And a lot of this, and eventually, will be just like this. So it's procrastination. We want to begin at our website maintenance task, but we notice that procrastination kicks in. So let's talk about procrastination. What is procrastination, and why do we procrastinate? And do we all procrastinate to the same extent? And why is procrastination so very common amongst both writers and developers? That's us, because it is. And why is the task of website maintenance particularly prone to procrastination? So procrastination is putting off a task until the very last minute or skipping the work altogether. And instead, you pursue lighter activities, like checking your social media or shopping online. So let me tell you what happens to me. I tell myself I have to write this big article, article about procrastination. So I have to do some research and I have to do some writing. And instead, I end up somewhere on the internet, filling out an online questionnaire, figuring out which kind of Winnie the Pooh character I am. <laughs> That's what I do. I am Tigger, by the way. So I talked to about this procrastination thing with my husband, and you know what he does? So he said, no, I'm supposed to be working at my slides for my WordCamp Europe presentation. He did a great job. But instead of that, I built a new plugin. And I felt like I said, no, you're not procrastinating correctly. You should do something lighter. But what's lighter for me, shopping online, is not lighter for him. So it could really be different for different kind of people. Still made me feel really bad because he built a new plugin and I ended up with a new pair of Taylor Swift pajamas. That's common to me. Very important with the procrastination thing, it kind of happens to you. So you know, don't not really intend to postpone something. It just it happens. All of a sudden, you're on that online quiz or something. So why do we procrastinate? So I already told you, I dove into all the scientific research there is. So let's look at what science says about this thing. So psychologists say that the first reason why people procrastinate is because there is a battle between present and future rewards, and present rewards always win. We as human beings just want immediate gratification. So if a task is tedious and boring, and we see no immediate gratification, we'll rather do something that instantly makes us feel good. So if you're procrastinating correctly, you're doing something that you enjoy. So you are doing, you do, you are doing it right. Yeah. And then the second reason is that we as human beings make really wrong assumptions about our motivation and about our time management. So we tend to think, oh, I'm not feeling like writing this article tonight but I might be really inspired and motivated to do it tomorrow. Which doesn't make any sense, because why would you be more motivated? But we really think that. And we also think that we'll do a task much quicker than we actually need. So we think, oh, it will take me an hour and a half, and then we'll end up spending three hours. So making wrong assumptions, which just is like a human being thing, about time management and future motivation is a reason why we procrastinate. And then there is a third reason why people procrastinate. And a lot of people procrastinate because they're, they're afraid that their work will not be good enough. So perfectionism, imposter syndrome, just the fear of not being good enough could be a reason why you procrastinate. What happens is that people have this idea of what they're going to build in their head, and it's so perfect. But the minute you start working on it, you will be bound to run into things that don't work out or imperfections. And just the idea of never living up to your idea, that makes for procrastination. And then procrastination could be a symptom of mental illness. So let me be clear here, procrastination in itself is not a mental illness. But it could be. If you're suffering from depression, for example, you don't feel like doing anything, so it makes sense you procrastinate. Also, people suffering from OCD have a tendency towards indecision, making them procrastinate. And then there are those people that have ADHD, and because their brain works differently, they are also more prone to procrastination. But what do we tell ourselves? 
So we've seen what the researchers say, but if you ask people, why do you procrastinate? So they'll say that they're insecure about a task. If a task is not well specified, if you don't know exactly what the end result would be, then that could be a reason why you would procrastinate. And then there is the thing that a lot of people don't know how to start. And my son, who is 12, he recently had to study for a history test. And he just didn't start. And I said, that test is coming, you should start. And he said, I don't know how. So I sat down with him and I said, well, first make a summary and then make a list of all the important dates you have to learn and then go ahead and read everything once more. And we had that list and he just instantly began studying. So he just didn't know how to start. It could also be the fear of me and telling him, you really should start. That motivates him. We don't know. Then people also say that they're not in the mood for a certain task and that's why they procrastinate or that they keep forgetting. And then there's this reason a lot of people say, I do this too, that they work better under pressure. So they need a deadline to challenge or motivate them in order to keep going. So we've looked at the reasons why we procrastinate. Do we all do it? And do we all do it to the same extent? You know, there's not a word for procrastination in Dutch. And I know this is true for other languages as well. So does this mean that Dutch people don't procrastinate? No, I wish. Everybody procrastinates. But it is weird that we don't have a word for it. We say, op de lange baan schuiven. That's a Dutch saying. But it's not a word. And otherwise, we would use postpone. But that's different. We all procrastinate, but there are big individual differences. Some people are much more prone to it than other people. And it could also change over the life course. So I am a woman of a certain age, and I'm not in menopause yet. That's going to be a different talk. But um, I'm in like in the first phase or level one of menopause, I don't know, perimenopause they call it. And I noticed that your hormones are, are changing, uh, hormones, the things that women have, and that also my procrastination behavior changed. So your, your behavior can change over time. So there are individual differences between people and within people. So I already told you, Procrastination is very common amongst writers and developers, our group of people. So why is that? Why are we so, why are we such procrastinators? Well, the first reason why writers and developers procrastinate is because of the task that they are doing. They're writing. They're writing either code or they're writing text. And writing is a hard task for your brain. It asks for a lot of brain power. It asks for attention, for concentration, and creativity, unless you use JetGPT. Then it doesn't ask for that. But if you use your own brain, it just asks a lot. And whenever a task is really hard, we tend to want to do something more fun instead and procrastinate, right? And then the other one is that the distraction is tremendous. You're always on your computer. So you'll have Slack, you'll have X, you'll have your email, you also have your phone somewhere. And some people have children on the back of their neck. So the fact that we all work on a computer means that we are constantly drawn out of the task we're doing, and that leads to procrastination. And let's circle back to website maintenance. Why is the task, or are the tasks of website maintenance, so very prone to procrastination? Well, website maintenance means a lot of writing. And we've seen that that is exactly what we procrastinate on most. Or writing code, right? It's a lot of updating, and that can be really boring and tedious. So we tend to want to not do that. We face a lot of distraction. And then, very important, if you're maintaining a website, you will hardly ever see immediate results. You'll probably have more visitors in the long run, but making changes on your website doesn't immediately lead to good results or more visitors. And that means that we will procrastinate on these tasks because we don't see an immediate effect. And if we do see effects, then results are really hard to measure. So it's hard to tell ourselves that we're doing something that is useful, although we all know what happens if you don't properly maintain a website. So how do we overcome this? So we now know, all know, oh, too. So let me talk you through a, a five-step plan on how to overcome procrastination and conquer it once and for all. It's really hard. 
So the first step, this is kind of an open door, is to set goals. You have to know what you want to reach with your website. Do you want to reach more traffic? Do you want to have more sales, more newsletter subscribers? And also think about what you're going to do in order to reach that. Are you going to write more articles? Are you going to update a lot of content? Are you going to improve the site speed of your website? And it's really important to set goals that are also realistic. So you're probably not going to write 80 blog posts next year. So don't set that goal. Set, set a goal that's something that you really can achieve. And then, and this is also very important, you should really get excited about your goals. Because if you feel like you're doing something important here, you're much less prone to procrastination. If you feel excited about what you're doing, that means something. So think about how awesome your website will be if you do the things you want to do, or how proud you will be if you finally are able to like, publish a new article and share it online. So that could be, or if you drive more traffic to your website, you should really envision yourself reaching those goals and get excited for it. This is hard. Yeah, think of me if you do that. I'll get excited for you. OK, so you set your goals, and you get excited about them. Now it's time to make a plan. And some people think that the goals are already the plan. But that's a mistake. So you really need to make time in your calendar in order to get working on it. Because if you don't, you know for sure you're not going to do it. So what you should do is to get that to-do list that you made of all the things you would like to do. And Think about how much time it will take in order to do these tasks, right? So maybe it will take you an hour to update a blog post, two hours to write a new one. That's really quick, though. Make it three hours. And then reserve room in your calendar. So, so put some time away and set room in your calendar to really do that. And set reminders. You have people that will do whatever they've planned to do, but most people will probably don't do that. So set reminders. Set reminders in Slack, in your calendar. Ask your husband to remind you to do something. You can do all kinds of stuff. And no matter how well you've thought everything through, things are never going exactly according to plan. So it can be really frustrating and demotivating if you never reach your goals. So what you should do is evaluate regularly and see whether or not this is doable. Because you don't have to make a perfect website, you should make progress on your website. So if you adapt your plan, you'll experience far less frustration and more success, and that will keep you going. So this all sounds really obvious, but people tend to stick to their goals, even if they're not doable, and that'll make them give up. So allow yourself to adapt your goals and to adapt your plan accordingly. And then. You should be really proud of yourself if you finish something. Overcoming procrastination is really hard, especially when it comes to website maintenance. So what you want to do is give your brain like this success feeling and celebrate everything you're doing right. So cross off your to-do list. That'll give you a little dopamine kick right there. Show off your new blog posts on social media and be happy for what you've did. You can also treat yourself to a nice cup of coffee or to go for a walk after you finished something that was really hard to do. That's, those are all things that you can celebrate your progress. And that will make it more likely for you to keep up the good work. So let's look at some few tips on how to conquer procrastination in general. We already talked a little bit about this, but in, in many, many cases, you've specified a task that is too big. So if you want to write a blog post, that can be like a hard task to grasp. Can you break that task up into smaller ones? For example, I want to write a blog post about the pros and cons of AI. Um, you can break that one up to say, I'm going to do some research first, then I'll write the introduction, and then I'll do the pros part, and then I'll do the cons part. So you have four little tasks that combined will give you that blog post. But it will be much easier to start with if you just start with a little one. I'm giving you this tip, and you don't want to see how my working environment looks like, but you should work in an environment that is clean and organized. You should not have a, a, a desktop that is full of crap like mine, but, and you should not have 
4,000 unread emails in your inbox. I'm going to be better at this, but this really helps. So if you have less things getting you out of your attention, that'll make it easier to keep doing it. And then, and this sounds really easy, it should become a habit. It should become part of your routine to work on your website. That's the real way how to beat procrastination. But making a habit out of something that takes a while and means that you have to go in and do something on your website at least every week and to keep the good work up. That's what's like the, the solution in the end. So what should you remind from this talk? What you should, should you remember from this talk? So everybody procrastinates. Some perhaps more than others, and some, like me, end up doing the really useless stuff when they're procrastinating. But be kind to yourself. You're not alone. You're not weird. You're just human. And website maintenance is important, but also prone to procrastination. You should remember that because you're going to procrastinate on these tasks, for sure. But if you know that you're going to do it, it'll make it a little bit much more easy to tackle that problem. If possible, set up a routine and make sure you do things regularly. Uh, make a plan and make room in your schedule. And finally, celebrate your success and your progress. And remember that progress is better than perfection. So this was my talk. Thank you. In the beginning of my talk, I told you a little bit about a plugin that we've been working on. It's the name of the plugin is Progress Planner. And if you're interested at all, you could check out our website, which is called progressplanner.com. Thank you so much for listening. OK. Wow, Marike, this was really interesting. I'm just looking at the people who have, have a question. their hands raised. Oh, Did this work for you? Do you have now an idea how to solve the procrastination? It's a difficult word, right? Show some hands. Nobody? Yeah, come on. All right. They're all now. So. They all have a five-step routine. So, uh, so it's solved. It's solved, right. Yeah. So we have time for questions. Anyone have a question for Marike? There are mics in the alley. He has a question. OK, can you step to the microphone, please? Yeah. You can also shout. That's not the way it's supposed to be, right? Uh, hello, uh, Lovra Hrust from Croatia. Uh, I often have a habit when I'm developing. Uh, I go to Facebook or LinkedIn and then start reading uh, and I noticed that uh, when I'm developing, uh, my brain goes, uh, gets tired after some minutes. Or the, I don't know, it's not uh, two or three minutes, but after some time. And then I go to this uh, uh, Facebook uh, just uh, to uh, rest a little <laughs> on my brain. But uh, now the problem is uh, not to rest too much. <laughs> so, uh, probably I should do better walk a little or something. Uh, but yes, uh, the, uh, the, uh, my comment is more than a question that um, uh, I need some rest yeah. because brain goes tired. But it's uh, difficult to catch this moment, uh, okay, now I am arrested, I should start work again, and so. Yeah, you do it very, not deliberately. Yeah, you're right, right? Your brain gets tired from a task like that, I think about 20 minutes on average, and then you'll need something. Um, and, and if Facebook works for you, then okay, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, I, f I feel like I enjoy it in the moment, but afterwards feel really bad about not being productive enough. So, but it, but it's, it's totally fine if you scroll through Facebook, especially if you find something new and exciting. It's, I think it's fine. <laughs> it's just, it's not fine if it bothers you, then it's a problem. Yeah. That's nice, thank you. Next speaker, a qu question. Hi, uh, my name is Francisco. I'm from Brazil. Uh, do, do you already heard about the Pomodoro technique? 
It's a time management technique. You heard about it? I've heard about it, but you, should, uh, you have to remind me because I don't know exactly how it works. So basically, you focus for 25 minutes, yeah. then you rest for five minutes. It's a cycle. Yeah. So I, I run, I start up based on it, so I can maybe show you. It's a project timer. It, it's on your subject, too. It's to help people get fo focused on work. Yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense, right? 25 minutes and then five minutes of rest and then go ahead. If that works for you, that's, that's great. For me, it's often hard to start. So before starting a task, I first go to the toilet and then grab a Coke and then I don't know what to do. And then I'll, uh, so I even, I, I have a hard time starting the task altogether. No, that's why it helped a lot because you do this thing in the five minute break. Yeah. And you go work again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have on the other side of the track also a couple of people. Can you have your question, your name, please? Uh, yeah, for me, when procrastinating, it's like the defining moment between starting the next ne uh, episode while watching Netflix or getting up and doing the thing uh, <laughs> where you said, like, it's deciding between the instant gratification and doing the thing you're supposed to do. Do you have, like, a tip for those moments where it's really hard to make the right decision? No. <laughs> I blame Netflix. No, it, it's like, I think 20 years ago, we had far less of those things that keep you inside of them. So TikTok and Instagram do, do the same thing, right? You're in Instagram Reels and I'm looking at, at dogs. I don't even particularly like dogs, but then I see them and I'm like intrigued. So for me, those things are really bad. I think if you're aware of that you're doing it, that's like half of the thing, because then you can make a conscious decision to either watch that next episode or, in my case, go to bed. That's the thing. Yeah. But the, so the only thing I, I can say is awareness or removing the Netflix app. No. That's not fun. May I respond to that one? Yeah. You can. I can, maybe. Um, awareness is one good thing. And also, uh, I think the best thing to you is... Uh, just make an agreement with yourself. Okay, I just going to watch one or two episodes at the max. Otherwise, you know that it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Well, then you are very oh. aware. So you are. So that's also the goal setting. Make it very like a, because procrastination is often unintentionally, and so if you in, then it's at least it's an in, intended decision to watch another one, which is better than unintending to do stuff which is just happens. And then you end up with Taylor Swift pajamas. And you don't need them. Nobody needs them. <laughs> All right, thank you. Next question, what's your name? Hi, I'm Ciprian. I'm currently living in uh, Florence, but I'm from Romania. So thank you for the talk. I'm curious for you, when it comes time to plan things that are hard and you're avoiding, and also to do those things, what works for you? Is it like? a logical framework, you're thinking about things from a logical perspective, okay, I don't want to do this, but once I will do it, it's actually something that might be hard, but it's going to be great in the end. Is it like an emotional thing? I want you do certain things to feel a different emotion associated or to, I don't know, move your body in a way to actually feel it or how do you actually manage exactly the starting point where is that battle between I need to do it, but I don't do it yet, you know? Yeah. How do you cross the chasm? Well, I, think, I think people get, I get a lot of stress from things I haven't started with at all. So what I, and, and that's the, the thing I want to avoid, the stress. So what I do is I write a lot of things down and I do one thing to start. And that could be as simple as sending an email, but then I at least started something and then I, and then it, I can do the rest. But I write everything down. I have multiple uh, notebooks. I, I carry them with me. I forget everything. Um, but that works for me. But I think it's my brother who said this to me, though, that starting something can avoid much of the stress. So you have a problem, but you at least started something in, 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 like in, 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 the, in the direction of a, a solution. That will give you a sense of, oh, okay. I've started this, this is going to be hard, but at least I've done something. Yeah. 
I don't know if you have anything on that also. No, thank you for the advice. Next time when I feel this, I will start watching an episode on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to do something will make me feel better. But no, that makes a lot of sense. And when I do that, it actually gets away all the mind clutter and it feels better and I get clarity and it's like, oh, I'm doing the right thing, you know, but it's always that starting. Yeah, thank yeah. You. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, Rian, on the other yeah. side. Hi, I'm Rian Richard from the Netherlands. Um, I go clean the house. <gasps> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, but not, that's but not really a reward, I was thinking, because, um, well, it's really not nice to do, but if I don't want, maybe that's something I uh, like less but I don't know. Well, it is lighter, but as Joost, you're being very productive while you're procrastinating. Because cleaning the house, I, I, I would love for me to do that. I just end up with junk. You're doing something that helps at least your house. <laughs> what helps for me is, is really a good routine. Like I, the first thing I do in the morning is start writing. And after that, I'm free to do what I like to do further. So like the hardest part first. That works for me. Yeah, I can imagine. If I don't plan out my day, I end up doing nothing. So I even now plan my free days with things like <laughs> just go walk and go do, and then I'll do it and I'll feel better. But otherwise, I would just be I don't do nothing. Do nothing is really well. I know. Yeah. I think uh, Rian, you can procrastinate in my house. Yeah. This time. Thank you. <laughs> 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 All right. Marike, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, put the mic down. Yeah, we're going to make a picture. <laughs> Where's the picture? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you.